four. Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, we're going back to our Marvel roots. Many of you may recall one of the first true building blocks of this channel was when we were talking about the Spider-Man video games around the launch of the Spider-Man No Way Home movie. And we continued that on with Batman. I'm going to jump and I'm going to make it. Now, what's excellent about these two movies is they were great. A lot of people loved them, so it was fun to reminisce on those games tied to those movies or indirectly tied to them in certain instances. Today, we're reminiscing on the Thor video game because Thor Love and Thunder has arrived. And this is a movie that I'm kind of interested in. I'm not super hyped for it. I'm not going to pretend to be super excited for it. I used to hate Thor, so the fact that I am mildly interested honestly says a lot. But I thought it'd be a lot of fun in Retro Rebound tradition to reminisce on the Thor video game in celebration of the movie. The difference, however, is there is one Thor video game, and this one Thor video game is terrible. Yes. And I thought for a change of pace, it might be fun just to rant and rave about one of the worst movie tie-in games ever made, as I like to call it, the MCU tragedy. And we'll get into what the MCU tragedy is in just a moment, but if you're new here and you're into nostalgia content, re-reviews, and current reviews on modern Nintendo Switch titles, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing. Thank you so much for hopping aboard. Now, what is the MCU tragedy? It's so important for me to explain it to you that we're going to skip the complete box experience for just a moment and break down what it is. So when they were establishing the MCU, as we know it today, right, where all these superhero movies are overlapping and now everyone who's a side character is getting their own TV show and every character is worthy of exploration because God forbid anyone just remains a side character nowadays. But it started simple, right? You had these movies, Iron Man, Thor, gradually building towards something. And those post credit scenes, oh, they were a special time, right? When you started to see the Avengers invitations start to be handed out. And you're like, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna all come together. That was unlike anything we had seen before. And with that Marvel hype, with this new phase, this new push they were doing, they were also stepping into video games. So you'd get a Captain America video game. You'd get a Thor video game. Iron Man got a couple of video games. Hulk got a video game, so on and so forth. This was a part of a multimedia push by them. And because of that, and games taking a while to make, it was underestimated the effort it would take to have some of these games be confident. And even though the touchstones for these games, like Thor here, the touchstone was clearly God of War, was ideal, and it made sense, and there was a vision. Oh, did some of them come out terribly. I've seen y'all write in about the Iron Man games, but we're going to start off with the Thor game and, and we'll eventually get around to it. So that's the MCU tragedy. Let's get into the complete inbox experience. Thor, God of Thunder. And you see Thor here on the front of the cover. Playable in 3D. Woo, crazy. Published by Sega. Usually a pretty good sign of things to come. Not this time around. The back of the box says, call down the mighty storm's fury. Now, you can already tell there might be some problems here, right? Just because of the fact that there's no, like, drop shadow to the text. It's just overlaid on some galactic background here. It immediately screams, like, we just threw this together. Anyway, it says, Battle is Thor commanding massive storm powers and wielding his legendary hammer, Mjolnir. Thunder across the Norse worlds to save Asgard, smashing massive foes from the Thor universe. With earth-shaking combat, grapple colossal enemies, unleash lightning, thunder, and wind. And it features Chris Hemsworth as Thor and Tom Hiddleston as Loki. That is one of the cool parts about this game. They did have the actors return for their roles. But think about when we sat down and we talked about the Raimi Spider-Man game. Hello? MJ? What do you want? No, I haven't found out anything. Don't call back. They had great gameplay qualities and in some instances, story qualities or open world qualities like with Spider-Man 2, where you could forgive some of their mishaps. You would learn very quickly that many of these actors were great on the big screen, but when it came to projecting your voice and creating a character through your voice that would then be an animated separately by someone else, 
that these performances from otherwise great actors were lifeless. Point us towards the Jotun. Patience, brother, the plan, remember? You must find their leader, Ymir. Where is he? Just, ah, Loki, there you are. I did not see you. It's just, uh, it just sounds like they're reading straight off the script in some instances. Loki, though the old father has denied me, I must get to Niflheim. So it's very cool that they are here and there are instances like Tobey Maguire appearing in the Raimi Spider-Man games. It's like, oh, nice, they're there. That kind of retains some of the spirit of when these things were made. Don't call back. But this is one of those times where, like many others, the official actors uh, didn't didn't get the memo, weren't directed properly in the booth, of course, to capture the true spirit of the character. I will destroy you. Now, cracking open it, we see the disc and the manual. Now, this game came out in 2011, so it was going up against Skyrim and undoubtedly getting engulfed by it. Uh, but the manual here is uh, pretty depressing. You know, I, I, this is when you know. You open up the manual and you see the controller and you already know that they're just going to consolidate the pages. And as you can see here, it goes to the limited warranty, some warnings, the controller again in a different language, and it's over. With a promotion for another MCU game, Captain America Super Soldier, on the back coming July 19th. 2011 wield the shield as captain america and this game what's funny is actually pretty good we'll talk about that maybe in another time but that was also published by sega so sega was involved in this mcu game push i believe they also published the iron man titles but i don't have them in front of me to verify so now let's talk about this game in its totality all right so the story, like many other superhero tie-in video games, yeah, you're just going to be going through the movie's plot. However, what's great about movie game tie-ins is often when they are used properly, they will expand upon and explore the movie's material in creative and fun ways. Whereas Thor, God of Thunder, just is so horrifically paced because of its godforsaken combat that... Any chances it has to roll you into its universe fall flat on its face. So I really don't think I need to go into the story as much as I do in other videos. We'll dabble in it. But I really do want to get into the gameplay. Because as I said, this is an MCU tragedy. So as I mentioned previously, it's clear the touchstone for Thor, God of Thunder, is God of War. God of War is a excellent in its heyday. We're not talking about the 2018 God of War on PS4. is an excellent beat-em-up style game with puzzle elements and a lot of brutality there and also quick time events that lead to executions it's just a really fun action focused ps2 slash ps3 series so for thor to take some inspiration from that i feel actually makes some sense right like this guy's got a big hammer he's a god he's stronger than everyone like god of war makes some type of sense here but this man is the god of wussies because he hits like a rubber sponge. It's terrible. Okay, I've never felt less like a god in my entire lifetime than playing as Thor, the god of thunder. Enemies are spongy. They will take hit after hit after hit after hit. And the crazy part is this is one of the most imbalanced experiences I have had the displeasure of going through as they swarm your screen with these big colossal enemies. And I get what they're going for, right? If it was balanced properly, as you're going through enemies three times bigger than you and just wiping them all out, that would be an amazing feeling for the player. Like, I am the god of thunder. But you just continuously mash buttons, get knocked down, take way too much damage, and then when you're fighting them, you have to kill them all if you want to do it quickly with a quick time event. And when you get them into that grab position, you can press one of the three face buttons that are available for different types of takedowns. One restores your magic, which again is really strange for the God of Thunder to have like a mana bar limiting how much thunder I can throw out, how much wind I can throw out, how much lightning I can throw out. They just limit that inherently. You can recover health through it and then you can just throw them around. And so right there, like that's a good mechanic, right? Like, okay, they're trying to create some gameplay balance, restore your health, risk reward, I mean, think of Doom Eternal as a very weird 
obtuse example here of a game that has you doing moment to moment decision making on do I want armor? Do I want health? Do I want ammo? Based off how you execute your enemies. So with here, Thor God of Thunder, they have that mechanic in mind. It's just that you have to slap your foes endlessly. You finally get to that point, and then it's a quick time event. It's a button mashing fest where you have to like hit Y really fast. And sometimes it just the animations look really buggy and janky. There's actually a point you're gonna see here in the gameplay. I'm in a boss fight and the camera just starts having an outright seizure. So not only is the gameplay completely imbalanced, but this is a really buggy and broken game on the Xbox 360. Now, I don't wanna go all negative right now. I want to go ahead and pump the brakes Let's talk about the DS version briefly. We'll hop back into the 360 version. This is a 2D side scroller that I have heard across many accounts, although I have not had the fortune of playing it. Sorry, excuse me. This one kind of pushed me off of it. I, I think I'm well reasoned for that, but I've heard this is the better version. So if you are a diehard Thor fan and you do need your Thor video game, it looks like the handheld counterpart may be where you want to shift your attention. That doesn't surprise me too much because growing up during this era of video games, as many of you know, with all of the various tying games that we got, there were so many out there that, you know, just the, the handheld versions were superior because they had to be completely re-envisioned. You couldn't just port them over like we're seeing nowadays where everything's getting ported everywhere in its original form, which is great. But certain ideas, like I always go to Lord of the Rings Third Age, it went from this turn-based RPG on consoles to this Fire Emblem style game on handhelds because it just fit the vision of a handheld better. Anyway, that's a game you could look into if you're looking for number one, some positivity in this video, but number two, your Thor video game. Now, as for Thor God of Thunder on the 360, returning to that, again, horrifically broken, buggy, and you know, really uninspired. And you can just feel that in projects. There's an energy and aura to pretty much every game we've ever played, right? How invested are the creatives? How much time did they have to explore their ideas? How worthwhile do they view this product? And you could just tell in a lot of instances while playing this game that it just seemed like they wanted to get from point A to point B without any surprises for the player. Like even things such as traversal are limited to quick time events. And I know we're talking about 2011, right? Technology isn't super far. We're nearing the end of the 360 life cycle. So it's not like I'm gonna be zipping around an open world store, although that would be kind of cool. But it just felt for its time, and especially, again, you got to remember, Skyrim's coming out. This felt super limited for its hardware. Even to this day, it feels extremely limited going and playing it on the Xbox 360, where if I wanted to go from one zone to the next, I would have to look around for, like, a portal in the sky somewhere, and I'd hit RB, and you just zip towards it. It's like, I've never felt more restricted by a developer than, I think, with Thor God of Thunder, because it just makes you feel like not a god at all no. and then again you combine that with the performances Weak, Jotun. i will destroy you and the the missed execution on the gameplay elements the story not being that interesting i just you know you see so many ideas i think what's frustrating about it is now in hindsight if you were to fire this game up and as you've seen in the gameplay there are so many ideas here that even games that we've come to know and love have taken and really used and made the most of you know the bridge in God of War 2018 that you can like rotate around and it'll take you to different sectors of the world? Well, that was an idea that was actually in Thor God of Thunder. Now it is introduced after a really awkward cutscene where Thor's just standing there with like lightning just spazzing all over his body. It's just like, okay, do, do we have any self-awareness here as developers to like maybe cut the animation a couple seconds earlier because it just looks really awkward? and distracting and the facial animations are just non-existent too but they had this idea here of using this rotating bridge uh to introduce different parts of the world and zip to different levels in the game and diversify the visuals a bit but again that's where it starts to overwhelm you with these really terrible enemy designs that just constantly swarm you and frustrate you endlessly not only that but this was in the era where every superhero game as we talked about in our Arkham Asylum video, was trying to be an Arkham game, where it was trying to do free flow. This was one of the few to go against the pack and really not do that. Like you saw in the back of the manual, 
Captain America Super Soldier did have free flow style combat and they actually did a pretty good job with it. It was in the level of, I'd say, Amazing Spider-Man. Like this isn't really free flow, but it's pretty dang close and it feels good enough where you can get into a rhythm in combat. This one kind of tried to buck the trend and say, well, you're a Thor, you're a god, so you're going to smash, slam, grapple enemies endlessly, uh, but they just kind of missed the mark. So when they decided to commit to that, they sort of left a template behind in exchange for one that was many generations back, and they couldn't even do that properly. So, all in all, it's a game that uh, I can't say I want to love because, again, as I stated when we started this, Thor isn't really my favorite superhero. But it would have been great as a introductory point for people trying to get into superhero games. And it's, again, it's just another reminder of how bad things used to be, right? Not every game could be this one and don't worry we'll, we'll talk about this one shortly not every game could be this though and i feel so bad for the people who try to complain about like insomniac spider-man and go like this is terrible open world fodder i'm like y'all don't even know how bad it was shut your mouths it was terrible and this is one of many examples as to why in movie tie-in games and IP tie-in games like Star Wars and so on and so forth have never been better, quite frankly. Especially compared to their roots. So that's all I've got to say on Thor God of Thunder. Hopefully the movie is better than this game here. But let me know what you're thinking about all of this down below. I'm excited to see your thoughts. Other than that, I'll catch all of you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.